I'm Ranger Michael from Sequoia National Park, and this is Tall Things Considered. So Ranger Michael, these trees are amazing. These, I mean, they're just so beautiful. They're so huge. Uh, tell me a little bit about them. Like, how, how big do they get, and, and, and why do they get that big? Yeah, giant sequoias are the largest trees by volume on the entire planet. They can grow roughly to just over 300 feet tall, and some of them can get as wide as 30 plus feet in diameter. Wow. Uh, in total weight, they can get upwards of about 4 million pounds, and that's kind of estimated <laughs> just because we can take the, the cubic footage and then multiply that by how large they are. So these are skyscrapers. Yeah, uh, <laughs> natural skyscrapers here. That's amazing. So what kind of adaptations do these giant sequoias have that allow them to get so tall? Yeah, so these trees are um, able to live for a long period of time and grow really large due to their resiliency. They are semi-fire resistant. Mm. They have properties that allow them to combat the bark beetle. And then mm. not only that, the bark itself is anywhere between one to two feet thick right down here at the base. Any plant really needs as much sunlight to, in order to photosynthesize. So these trees growing upwards are able to get all their green foliage up as high as they can to take in as much sun as possible. Being a tree that can get to roughly 3,000 years old, their first 600 to 1,000 years are spent just going upwards. <laughs> At that point, it turns into an adult and starts to widen out a little bit. <laughs> as, as we all do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they can be, th these trees could be thousands of years old. Yeah, that's correct. The oldest one we found was around 3,266 years old. Wow. That is, that's a long time to be growing. It's, it's hard to fathom just how long ago that was. A lot of these trees yeah. you could think of around the, the Roman Empire were about that big, but still <laughs> growing and living today. What about their root system? Like, do they go real deep? Are they able to like kind of anchor themselves in? In the Sierra Nevada mountains, we really only have about six feet of soil above our granite bedrock. So these roots go down roughly six feet and then they spread out. They're six here. feet, that's it. That's it. About <laughs> as tall as I am. That's yeah. as deep as they go. But the expansiveness of them allows them to anchor into the ground. When you have a tree that's 300 feet tall, you'd estimate about 150 feet of roots in any direction. They have about one acre of root, sticks, uh, root system, allowing them to interlock with other trees and really stabilize themselves. So they like hold hands underneath the soil to, to make sure that they're all stable. <laughs> exactly. Their root systems will intertwine with each other, allowing for that extra little bit of stability. So they kind of help each other out, making sure that they you can hang it. on. Yeah. That's really cool. So uh, now these guys are pretty fire resilient but uh forest fires is kind of a natural part of of these forests what do what do these trees or how do these trees use the fires i guess to not just survive and but to, but to thrive as well yeah so um we talked about that bark being so thick as that coat of armor kind of giving it a thermal insulation for it but it's not just that the redness of these trees comes from tannic acid and that substance is almost a fire retardant it can sear it can scar but it's really rare for them to burst into flames unless you have a really hot and intense fire other than that the sequoia cones are actually one of the neatest things. They're called serotonous cones, meaning it takes a certain condition for them to open. You can see this one still has some green on it. Yeah. And as that's attached to the tree, if there's a fire burning on the ground, that heat rises up, slowly drying out this cone. If you flip it to this side, it's already started to dry out and you can see that brownness. If I do this, there's a seed. Oh, wow. So as, that. <laughs> as the heat dries it out, it, uh, it releases those seeds. So all 200 or so seeds in found, is found inside each cone can slowly trickle down, riding those thermal pockets up to about a half mile away. Oh, wow. So these guys actually need the fires in order for their, uh, for their seeds to, to even be dispersed. You got it. There are other ways with animals, the chicories, but fire is by far the most prevalent way. It not only allows for the seeds to be released, but it clears the down and dead material, giving us a really ashy mineral rich soil for those seeds to land in. Wow, that's a really cool adaptation. It is. So uh, how, how is a warming planet? affecting these giant sequoias that have been around for thousands of years. 10 years ago, I would have told you that these trees are resilient, fire won't affect them, insects won't affect them. But as we're seeing this increase in temperature, we're seeing an increase in drought, prolonged drought. Our fire seasons are more intense and hotter for a longer period of time. And these kind of drought stressed trees have allowed for the bark beetles to really flourish and take advantage of them. Over the last about seven to 10 years, we've seen 33 giant sequoias in their mature state succumb to the bark beetle, which we really haven't seen in the past. 
So all the 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 stress of the of the climate changing and getting drier is leaving these trees more susceptible to these insects. You got it. Wow. So uh, what can kids do at home who aren't uh, maybe close to this park? What can kids do to ooh, maybe help protect these trees and uh, you know keep these living giants uh, keep, you know living for another thousands and thousands of years? Yeah, I think one of the most important things for us is working as a community. Planting trees, planting gardens at home are really great steps for that. A tree is a great carbon sink, taking in a lot of the different emissions. And then you have planting a garden, being more sustainable. And it's a great family activity to do with your parents. Um, it's a great thing to kind of learn about the ecosystem. And in general, it kind of gives back to all our natural areas and really helps us save the earth. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram at Outsider.